Have you spent a lot of time or money creating an awesome logo or band or stage name for your music? If so, you might need to protect these things with a trademark. Hey, I'm Reagan Ram with OrpheusAudioAcademy.com, helping you make better music and grow your fan base online. Now, do you need a trademark for your band name or your logos or album art or whatever? Is that something that you should be thinking about doing for your music? One of the best reasons to have a trademark is it allows for exclusivity, meaning that you can be the only one out there with that band name, for example, and no one else would be allowed to use that name. And there are a lot of things to consider when going about getting a trademark for your music brand, which is why I actually went and interviewed an intellectual property and patent lawyer, Adam Woodward, and we discuss all the various elements of trademark and why you might want to have one for your music. And so if you want to know what an actual lawyer has to say on these things, here it is. Trademark is commercial things. Commercial expression is a good way to think about trademark. When you're trying to identify your goods or services to the general public, you have a reputation, you have a brand, you might use a logo, a color scheme, a word, a phrase, a design of packaging that's called trade dress mm -hmm. uh, to distinguish yourself from others in the marketplace and signal to consumers, hey, this is the real deal. This is the stuff. Um, there's collective marks, there's service marks, trademarks, collective marks, certification marks. Um, and But the general overarching principle of trademark is helping consumers discern the identity of a particular brand, helping consumers know who's making this and what is its reputation. Trademarks are incredibly big business. Just think of Louis Vuitton. Gucci, mm -hmm. the Disney logo, denominations of origin, designations of origin, being able to signal this item or this service comes with the benefit, the experience, the skill, the prestige of a particular company, person, brand carries with it a lot of economic value. There's a reason people rip off Louis Vuitton bags and Gucci clothes mm -hmm. and things like that. So when you are a creative artist, you know, odds are you aren't just going to be made. Odds are you're not just putting your work out there for people to just enjoy for free. You know, you can still get a copyright in that case or you do a creative commons license where people can use it however they want to. You still have your copyright. But if you start selling, you start selling your goods or selling your services as a record producer, a label, a studio. Um, either the goods of the musical pro produced or the services of production, you've entered into commerce and you want to distinguish yourself from those around you. You have a brand. You have Orpheus Audio Academy, mm -hmm. Unity Game, Andromeda Coast, uh, Rachel Ram Fine Art. These are denominations. These recognize who you are and what you do. That's a good time to register a trademark. Trademark, like copyright, does not come into existence because the government says so. Copyrights are registered. Trademarks are registered um, because that's an Im implication that like your car, which exists before being registered with the government, the government is recognizing something that already exists. So to create a copyright, you fix something in a tangible medium. To create a trademark, you use a name, a logo, a color scheme, in commerce and there's not a there is it's incredibly broad the kinds of things you can trademark for instance recently or not not so recently but john deere trademarked that distinctive green and yellow color scheme they use they actually trademarked green and yellow uh in the <laughs> use of farm equipment and all the goods if someone tries to go out and make a tractor and call it Bob's Tractors, but he decorates it in that green and yellow John Deere distinctive color scheme. Doesn't matter, he never says John Deere, doesn't matter if he mentions them. Mm -hmm. People are going to look at that tractor and say, oh, that's a John Deere tractor. You know, whether they see his name on it or not, John Deere is going to sue him for trademark infringement because mm -hmm. they got the they got the color. And what's interesting is if your product or service becomes synonymous with the generic idea of something, you lose your trademark. 
For instance, Kleenex is a made up word. Uh, mm -hmm. Kleenex is a brand of tissue. However, their brand was so widespread, so pervasive that facial tissues came to be called Kleenexes, regardless of whether they were made by mm -hmm. Kleenex or not. And Kleenex actually lost their trademark on that term because it was synonymous with something that's generally descriptive. And so that is one of the lodestar, that's the lodestar of trademark is it has to be distinctive. That's why companies often make up weird names, eBay or Amazon, as used to describe, you know, sales of something. If you called your company Amazon and Amazon Lumber Company, you may or may not be able to make get a trademark on it if you were a company that cuts down trees in the Amazon and someone else came along and said, I will also want to be Amazon Lumber. Like, well, we're all cutting down trees in the Amazon for lumber. Our name just describes really basically what we are. You can't you typically can't mm -hmm. trademark things like that unless okay. you can show they you've acquired some kind of distinctiveness. Yeah, so, I went about getting a trademark for Kingdom Pen. So that's one of my other businesses. Excellent. So yeah, the logo, I think I think the color scheme. I can't remember what all was involved. Did you ago. file? Did you file and get it yeah. issued? Yeah, I did file it or with the government. Yeah, register Wonderful. it. Yeah. So then, Wonderful. how would so then? What are some maybe some practical ideas then for music artists and how they might potentially want to go about like trademarking their brand? Mm -hmm. Definitely trademark your band name. Uh, you know, as far as musical, so you want to trademark it in a couple different categories. Uh, a band yeah. name. You, Real you quick, want to if I can stop you there for a second, because there are bands out there that. There's uh, have the same name, right? There's um, especially if you're like looking up on Spotify, right? You search for a band, you can find several different bands with the same name. So, but if you own the trademark, are you able to then have the power Dude. to? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The trademark rights and intellectual property rights generally are typically exclusive. They're exclusionary rights. They're negative rights. They're not often positive rights. Like you own a trademark in something, but you know, doesn't necessarily give you the right, give, ensure that you will be able to sell or make your business profitable just because you own the trademark. But it does ensure that you'll be able to keep other people from being successful okay. or profitable using the name. So yeah, if you, you see a bunch of my name. <laughs> yeah, if you see a bunch of different bands with the same name, they could be in different countries with different governing laws. Um, trademark is country specific, although there's something called the Madrid Protocol which allows for the international registration of, pro of uh, trademarks through the World Intellectual Property Organization. But it's somewhat complex and you do still need to file separately in each country. So different bands with the same name can come out of difference of nationalities. It can also, sometimes you can have different bands that use the same name in the same country. It just means no one has gone about trying to register that trademark yet. Okay. Now, if one of those bands decided, hey, I don't want anyone else using my name, they can file a trademark registration and they will have to disclose to the trademark office that, hey, there are other people using this name, but I believe I have the right to exclusively use this name in commerce because I did it first. I was the first one to release a rec. I was the first one to sell a record using this name. I was the first one to sell tickets to my live show using this name. And that's the interesting thing where you need to remember trademark is specific to a given class of goods or services. Delta makes faucets for your kitchen. Are you familiar with the company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Delta makes faucets for your kitchen. Delta Airlines has planes and flies you around. They both own trademarks in Delta. They both own the Delta trademark. But a trademark is not for all goods and services that could be sold under that name. It's only for all goods and services that you sell under that name and that could reasonably be confused. No okay. one who's going to buy a faucet is going to mistakenly think that Delta Airlines is going to sell them a faucet. And no one who goes to get on a plane or looking to travel somewhere is going to mistakenly think that Delta Faucets is going to send sell them a plane ticket. Likelihood of confusion is essential in establishing your particular trademark area. So there's about 44 or 45 different classes of goods and services under the international NICE, pro, uh, NICE, I can't remember how you pronounce it, N-I-C-E, it's French, uh, convention that designates all the different goods and services that people can register trademarks under. And the okay. United States follows that treaty convention. So for instance, as a band, you're probably going to want to trademark your name under multiple classes. 
you're going to want a trademark on uh, the class of goods that includes uh, musical recordings, streaming downloads, CDs, audiovisual recordings. That's a class of goods. And you're going to want to get a trademark to protect the goods that you would sell with your band name. However, if you offer live performances, if you are, uh, you know, you go to someone's wedding and you'll perform for them. Uh, if you go on tour, if you offer, you know, mentoring and help for money to up and coming musicians, things like that, that's a service and you'll want mm -hmm. a service mark. Now you can have one trademark service mark. People often use trademark interchangeably to include trade and service marks because the lines are blurry. But technically, when you're selling services, it's a service mark. When you're selling goods, it's a trademark. Okay, interesting. But in one application, you pay a separate fee for both, but you could say, take for instance, uh, the Rolling Stones, and in one application designate multiple classes. So international class five, international class 10, international class six, and each of those would correspond to a different class of goods or services. You'd issue your mark and then you could go apply it. You know, you could sue anyone or, or exclude anyone who was using that name to sell any of those particular goods or services. Okay. Well, that's definitely very eye-opening, very enlightening. Definitely oh, learned a lot there. And fun fact, trademark and copyright do overlap substantially because logos are both right. a creative expression and can be used in commerce. So mm -hmm. if you write, if you make the, the example that came to my mind is you you make some really cool album art. It's an original expression you have uh, designed something really cool and neat and you would both want to register your copyright in that new original design and trademark it because you're going to be selling it in commerce. And technically, you know, if, if someone copied your design uh, but maybe didn't sell it, Maybe someone just started giving away posters of your album art. They took your, they liked your album. They liked the album art. So they started making posters and giving them away to their friends. If you had a uh, trademark registration on your logo, your album art, where you were selling your CDs, you couldn't sue them. You couldn't sue them for trademark infringement because they were selling, they were using your logo. They were using the thing that you had trademarked, but they weren't making any money. They weren't right, using it in commerce. Right. No, no money was changing hands. So that's the important component of trade in a trademark. Mm -hmm. No harm, no foul. But if you had both the copyright and the trademark on your album, your album art, then you could sue them because even though they weren't selling the posters or just giving them away to all their friends, that hurts your market or you, you you're like, Hey, well, maybe I'm not selling posters now, but if there's a market for posters, if people want posters, I, I want to make posters of right. my own original art and I want to sell them. So by creating a derivative work, a poster of my album art, you are harming the market for my creative work. Exactly. You know, you're like, I'm not just selling an album. I'm selling it at the music CD. People are buying my, of course, you'd have to argue. Well, people are buying my album, not just for the music. They're also buying it because they like art. Um, right. and, and these posters hurt the market for that. But the copyright would give you the ability to go after anyone who's potentially okay. affecting the market for your creative expression. And the trademark gives you the ability to go after people who are using the same design in commercial, in business right. transactions. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, maybe, yeah, as you're a small artist and you're just getting started and you don't have to worry about these things, but as you start to grow, definitely get those mm -hmm. trademarks, get those copyright registrations. So absolutely, this has been yeah, really awesome, really eye opening. definitely learned a lot and I think it's been really beneficial. I'm glad to help. And it's important if you're not at the point where you can afford an attorney or you can afford to register your trademark or your copyright, uh, trademark registrations typically start at around $250 per class. And that's just the filing fees. You also have to pay an attorney to draft and do the research and stuff like that. So bare minimum, $250 for a trademark. But you can establish 
for the purposes of later trademarking your work that I was the first to use this in commerce. Just try to think about date stamps. You know, okay. take a picture, write a document to yourself, certify it, mail it to yourself. Say, hey, I sold my first blank today using this name, using this logo. Have someone sign that piece of paper. Have someone witness it. Find a way to create a public rec. Find a way to create a record that uh, an independent third party could verify. You know, like you can use the whole trick of mailing it to yourself in the envelope and getting the postmark on it. The point is for trademark and for copyright. You just want to someday be able to go to the government when you do have the money to register your copyright or register your trademark and show first use. Mm -hmm. Trademark, uh, you, you want to show first use in commerce. Good thing to do would just be to save your receipts or your invoices. For a trademark, mm -hmm. if you, you know, a couple years down the road, you want to register your trademark, save your first receipts. Say, hey, look, I first used this in com. I first used the name Andromeda Coast in commerce on July 5th, 2019, because here's a receipt for my first sale, my first digital audio download or something like that. That creates a record. That sh receipts show use in commerce. Okay. So that later on, even if someone registers a trademark before you, you come in and register your own mark and say, yeah, I mean, I know they registered before me, but look, I can prove that I was first with my receipts. And the trademark office will make that other trademark go away and give it over to you typically. But oh, okay. if you have the money to hire, you know, hire an attorney right. or go through that process. And mm -hmm. it's the same with copyright. Someone That's has really a copyright cool. registration and you yeah. come behind them. So in conclusion, I don't think a trademark is really something you have to worry about getting early on. If you're just getting started, you don't have a lot of fans. Your time and money is much better spent working on just creating better music, publishing more music and finding those fans online. Now, if you want help finding those ideal super fans that are gonna fall in love with your music and buy everything you put out, then definitely grab my micro genre discovery worksheet in the description below, and this will walk you through the process of figuring out where your music fits in so you can be that big fish in a small pond and attract those super fans to you in your music. That said, as you do start to grow, I definitely think it's a good idea to consider getting those trademarks that you need for your band name or your album art or any logos that you have. But that is down the road after you've grown a bit. Now, if you have more legal questions surrounding your music, such as what is the legal way to upload covers or sample from other songs, movies, or TV shows and more, then I did a full interview with Adam where we talk through all these different things. It's very interesting, very eye-opening, and gives you basically a complete legal ed education when it comes to your music. So if that sounds interesting to you, you can simply click on the screen now to go watch that full interview. Otherwise, have a great day and keep creating. Thank you.